Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. Simu 0.2 is out now, the first release for more than three months, and it brings one specific change which could be huge for the future of Wii U emulation on Android. I'll put the list of changes on the screen right now, and there are so many fixes and new features compared to 0.1. But the big change for us is that 0.2 finally adds custom driver support. In the app, you can press the three dots at the top right of the screen, hit settings, graphic settings, and you will see custom drivers. From here, you can add all of your favorite Qualcomm or Turnip drivers to change and improve the performance and stability of the app. This is huge. Those of us with Snapdragon devices know how literally game-changing turnip drivers can be. Turnip drivers can be the difference between a game chugging along at 15 frames per second or soaring at a perfectly smooth 60. There are many drivers available, and with enough experimentation, you can be sure to find one that works well with whatever device you have and whatever game you're trying to run. In this video, I'll be testing Simu on my Retroid Pocket Flip 2, which has a Snapdragon 865 processor, the same one found in a Samsung S20. And I'll also be testing the Odin 2 Portal, which has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, the same one found in a Samsung S23 Plus or S23 Ultra. It can be quite complicated to keep up with all the different devices and drivers. So if you check out my website, ryanretro.com, I have some compatibility lists there we're all working on together to make sure we get this all working the best it can be. So let's now jump into a few examples of what games have improved since the previous update. In my previous Simu testing videos, Yoshi had a little bit of a problem. See the video and see if you can figure out what's wrong here. I'm happy to say that with the new update and with turnip drivers applied, they do completely fix those missing textures. And now Yoshi has his lovely face back again. I just have to interject here to let you guys know that the turnip driver actually wasn't what fixed Yoshi's missing head. Here I'm using the default system driver and his head has come back. So it seems that they've done something in this update that has fixed this bug. So even without using the turnip driver, this game is now fixed, which is great to see. So if you did want to play this game, it is now working well. Here on the Odin 2 portal, we get lovely performance. We get a very, very lovely, solidly smooth 60 frames per second here with all textures working. As I run through the level here, it stays at a very solid and consistent 60 and it looks wonderful. This is really nice to play, a really great experience here on the portal. So if you'd like to play Yoshi's Woolly World, it is now totally playable. No more missing head textures and lovely performance. The game is silky smooth and looks incredible on the 7 inch OLED screen here. This is just absolutely glorious. On the Retroid Pocket Flip 2 over here, we're also getting very nice performance again. Not quite the solidly locked on 60 of the Odin 2 Portal. With the weaker hardware here, we are getting more frame per second dips, but still overall a very nice experience. And depending on the driver used, I've seen very different results. Some of them hovered around 30 frames per second. Here we are mostly around 60, with the occasional drops to the mid to low 50s. But once again, with a beautiful screen and a really nice little handheld like this, it's a great Wii U experience. Something that I couldn't say with the previous update. So we really are seeing a fantastic update for Wii U here. And if you haven't given Wii U a chance before, I think now is the perfect time to get into it. So that's one success story. Let's now try another. One game that's not been fixed by the update itself, but can be fixed with custom drivers, is Twilight Princess. There is a map bug in this game. Using the default Qualcomm drivers, the minimap will appear as a little rectangle. It will flicker, it will disappear and reappear. It's just not working the way it should with Qualcomm drivers. But now with Turnip driver support, we can come up to the settings menu, go to custom drivers and pick a different driver. I'll use this 25.2.0 R4 fixed driver, which is one I've been using in some of my tests lately. And now when we launch the game again using that turnip driver, you will see the map is now completely fixed and appears perfectly in the corner of the screen. So this is just one example of where these drivers can help. I'm now playing with a perfectly functional minimap and it's a far nicer experience thanks to this update. So Twilight Princess is now even more playable than before thanks to fixing those bugs and glitches. 
You may notice in some situations that the turnip drivers actually run a little slower than the Qualcomm drivers, which is a little bit different to how they act in other apps. But this is the very first implementation of the drivers in Simu, so we may just have to be a little bit more patient until they update it. But the fact that it fixes those missing textures is excellent. We can also see the same thing on the Odin 2 portal, a perfectly functional minimap. And once again, due to the increased power, a smoother feeling experience. Both run mostly at 30 frames per second, but the Retroid Pocket Flip 2 does drop down to around the mid-20s, whereas the Odin 2 Portal holds firm at that 30 frames per second, only sometimes dropping to around 29 that is in no way even noticeable when you're playing. So the Odin 2 Portal really is shaping up to be a fantastic Wii U machine. Another game that's been notorious with crashing on Wii U emulators is Mario Kart 8. Often crashing after a single player Grand Prix race and being unable to make it to the second race. This issue has been around for more than seven years at this point. Longer than the companies who make these devices have even been in business. So this is by no means a new issue or one only targeting these handhelds. This has been around for years. So let's see if we can now get through that first race using the new update. The frame rate's pretty good. We don't have a solid 60 frames per second. We're mostly in the high 50s, dipping a little bit and raising up a little bit at times, but it feels nice and smooth. We can see here the glider is visible. That's sometimes an issue in Mario Kart where the glider becomes invisible in certain emulators. So once again, that's a good sign. But our main test for today is to see if we can make it through to the second race, something that we've not been able to do until now. Let's just see if we can hold out for the win here. We can, so now is the moment of truth to see if we can make it through to the second race, something we've, as of yet, never been able to do on Simu on Android. Here we go, let's go to the next race. I'm really praying and hoping here. And we seem to immediately be straight into the second race. I'll just make sure I actually get off the mark because sometimes it does get stuck here in my experience with other emulators, but we seem to be smoothly into the second race here, something I definitely couldn't do before. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this issue is now fixed, but if I suddenly get a crash in the future, I will let you guys know. And please also let me know in the comments how your experience has been, because this is probably the greatest win of this update of Simu. Once again, just as a quick point of comparison, here is Mario Kart 8, the same race, the same racer, on the Odin 2 Portal, a more powerful device. And with the Retroid Pocket Flip 2 averaging around the mid to high 50s, I assume we probably will get a pretty solid 60 on this device. You can see at the top left of the screen, it's compiling new pipelines. I imagine that once those are all fully compiled, we're going to get a really nice and fluid frame rate here. And just driving around, once again, we're getting around 58 to 59 frames per second, but it feels buttery smooth on this lovely 120 hertz screen. So as we continue to compile these new pipelines at the top left of the screen, let's talk about pipelines, shaders, why you need them and why they're helpful. When you see this message that Simu is building new pipelines, a pipeline is essentially a set of instructions that tells Simu how to process and display graphics like shaders on the screen. But what is a shader? A shader is like a tiny program that tells your device how to draw things on the screen, like the lighting, the shadows and the textures. But the first time you play a game on your device, it has to build those shaders while you're playing, which really slows the device down causing little freezes and stutters in the game. So we want to get around that. We don't want freezing and stuttering while we're playing. So a way to do that is by downloading pre-compiled shaders. This essentially means somebody has compiled all of those shaders on their own device by playing through the game. Then they're sharing that file with the rest of us. And then our device won't need to build shaders by itself because it has that file it can reference already. So then it doesn't have to keep stopping to build them and use up all your resources in the middle of the game. Let's take a look at a game with pre-compiled shaders versus a game that doesn't have pre-compiled shaders and has to build them as it goes along. Here is the Wind Waker with pre-compiled shaders. And as I spin the map around, all of these shaders have already been loaded in. So we get a nice smooth experience. We do sometimes still have to generate pipelines, but we're not generating any shaders. All of these surfaces and textures and shadows and lighting, they've already been compiled before playing the game. So everything runs nice and smooth at a pretty solid 30 frames per second. 
we're able to run around, look around, and it doesn't need to create anything for the first time. That's already been done before we play, so we get a super nice and smooth experience. Also on the topic of this game specifically, I heard that during the recent update a few months ago, this game was nice and smooth on the tutorial island, but then really slowed down once getting further into the game. That has now been fixed with the update and now runs smoothly throughout the game. Sagith here said he's almost done speed running through the game and he's about 85% through and it's running really nicely. So that's really encouraging and promising. So this is how the game runs with pre-compiled shaders. Nice and smooth. Let's now come into the game settings and remove shader caches. That's going to delete that pre-compiled shader cache I downloaded and we're now going to start again with no shaders. Just like how you would the first time running this game. You'll see up the top of the screen is compiling new shaders as we play. And now not only do we have to try to play the game itself, we also have to compile the shaders as we're playing. And you'll see the number getting into the hundreds here as we play. Whenever I spin the camera around to show new things on the screen, or whenever I go to a new area for the first time, it's going to stutter a little bit. It might not be too bad in many cases, but you will notice a little bit of stuttering every now and then when the game has to load up new things it hasn't seen before. Every time I turn to a new corner or enter a new house, you're going to see that message of it compiling the shaders for this. Think of it like playing a game of Minecraft and having to generate each new chunk as you move further and further away from your home base. It's essentially that same thing. I have to say here the performance is actually really, really good. We are running this really well with the updated turnip drivers, but your mileage will vary depending on what device you have and what game you're playing. And being able to compile these shaders before we play is definitely beneficial because you can get all of that stuttering out of the way before you even jump into the game and have a nice smooth experience, which is what we're all aiming for. So I highly recommend getting pre-compiled shaders. So where can you get pre-compiled shaders? Well, getting these shaders, it turns out, is a little bit of a gray area. All I can say is if you did search Wii U shaders, you're going to find it immediately. So I won't point you exactly where to find it, I'll just say if you try to look for it for even more than 5 seconds, you can't miss it. So if you do want to find pre-compiled Wii U shaders, they are right there for you. So we can add pre-compiled shaders and pipelines to help smoothen our experience and play around with different drivers which can fix broken textures and also further enhance performance, but those are not the only changes we can make in Simu. If you press the three dots at the top of the screen and hit graphics packs, the first time you do this, this is going to be empty. You simply need to hit this download button at the top of the screen here, and it's going to populate a list of all the available graphics packs for every game you have installed. It will only take a few seconds and we now have unlocked more settings for each of our games. If we come to the Wind Waker for example, we can go to Graphics, Resolution, and if you're struggling to run the game, here you can lower the resolution to maybe 720p or even lower if you have a lower end device. We can also change the shadow resolution, although this can be very demanding. So I would almost never recommend increasing this because it can be quite taxing on your device. But if you're really struggling to run a game, lowering this down to 50% can help your performance. We also have various other settings like a mod to remove the HUD for taking screenshots, a workaround that might stop frame drops if you have a weaker older device, a fix if you have an Intel integrated GPU and all kinds of different various mods for each of your games. So be sure to check this out, it's built directly into Simu itself. All you have to do is hit that one download button and it's all going to be available to you. And hopefully that will also help you get your games running well. So while we do have many great updates here, it is not all sunshines and rainbows. This is still only release 0.2. It's still a very new and very immature app with a lot of growing to do. I did have a few crashes while testing out some of these games. Almost none, but there were a few, so I do want to say that. Also, in my previous Simu videos, I tested Breath of the Wild and it crashed in the opening scene. So I was really excited to see if I could get better performance here. But it has just disappeared. I can't see it in my library whatsoever. On both of my devices, it has just become invisible. If I go into the settings here and title manager, it is here on the list. It is recognized as being part of my library, but actually in the game list itself, it has gone. I don't know where it's gone and what's happened, but that's technically even worse than the previous update. So hopefully that will get worked on as well and I can get that running. The biggest and best part of this update is that driver support, but it's not quite fully baked yet. 
Adding support for alternative drivers, especially turnip drivers for those of us with Snapdragon devices, is incredible, and it can unlock much better performance in some games and fix textures in others, like the minimap in Twilight Princess. But there's not only a few turnip drivers to pick from. There are tons, with new ones being uploaded all the time. Tinkering with these turnip drivers is actually an entire game in itself, which some people will love and some people just would rather didn't exist. Having choice is obviously not a bad thing, but the current implementation of choosing a driver could be improved. Some emulation apps let you go into individual games and change the driver for that game specifically. For example, maybe this one works with Misa Turnip Driver 25. But this game specifically will crash if you use a turnip driver with it, so for that game we need to use a Qualcomm driver. Being able to change each game's driver individually is fantastic. Right now Simu only supports one driver for the whole application. Yoshi's Woolly World performs much better using the default Qualcomm driver than it does with a turnip driver, but Twilight Princess requires a turnip driver to have a minimap. Without per game driver settings, you are going to become very familiar with this driver selection screen, and you're going to have to make notes about which driver to use for each game, or use a compatibility spreadsheet like on my website. This is the very first update of Simu that has any kind of switchable driver support whatsoever, so I am willing to cut them some slack here and give them some more time to improve this feature. I really hope for the next update we get per game driver settings, because I think that again will be a game changer. So that is the update for Simu on Android. What do you think about it? Please let me know in the comments what you think about it and if you've tried any games that work really well. If you'd like to pick up a Retroid Pocket Flip 2 or an Odin 2 Portal for yourself, check out my affiliate links in the description. And of course, if you like the video, please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.